Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. This is part two in my series where I demonstrate how to use the subtotal function. The subtotal function gives you an accurate record when you apply the subtotal function to a filtered list. In today's lesson, part two, I'm going to present the challenge of maintaining accurate subtotals when the size of our data set expands. In other words, when we add more records. So here's the data set and the formulas that I used in part one. I'm going to use them in part two as well. Notice up here that I use the subtotal function. So with the subtotal function, the first argument is, what is the function number? So this funny number 9 is going to sum uh, our, our data set, or sum specifically the field in our data set. Now, why 9? Well, there are 11 possible functions. And going in alphabetical sequence, sum is 9 out of the 11 in alphabetical sequence. So that's why we use function number 9. Now, notice that I'm using a name range over here to subtotal. And that range runs from row 7 in column C down through row 36 in column C. The challenge in this lesson will be when I add additional records. But the beauty, which I presented in part one is that when the subtotal function is used in connection with a data filter. So in the data tab of the ribbon applying a filter, now when I want to see the total for not all the records but only for two categories, accessories and computers, the subtotal function is beautiful because it gives me the subtotal using the sum function for only the visible cells. The visible cells, in this case, are the cells that met the criteria for my filter. Now, notice over here that I use subtotal function number one. Remember, there are 11 functions. The first one, alphabetically, is average. So function number one for average, function number nine for sum, function number two for count. All right, now let's talk about the second challenge. I'm going to restore all of the records, and now watch what happens when I go to append two records. Notice that the sales that I have in, in the record set, 1,190,000. Let me add in two records for the month of July. So for July in computers, the sales were 50,000, and in July, the sales for accessories were 20,000. So I added in 70,000. Let me change that. I added in $70,000 in sales, but this didn't update because the name range that I was using only went down through row 36 in column C. So the name range that I used, sales in this case, was clearly defined. So it's interesting to note that if I inserted the two records inside that name range, inside the data set, so let me right mouse click and say insert, and I'll come down here and I'll select these two records and I'll use my mouse to drag them and drop them, you see how the subtotal is able to pick up the accurate uh, named range sales because I inserted the records in the middle. Now that rarely happens because generally when we're appending records we're appending hundreds if not thousands of records and we probably don't know how many so it would be completely impractical or a waste of time to go through and insert records in the middle just so we could have accurate uh, subtotals. So let me show you what we do in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. We have a structured data set. I'm going to remove the filters. With one cell selected over here, go to the Insert tab on the ribbon, and over here in Tables, we want to change this range into an Excel 2007, Excel 2010 table. So creating the table, the confirmation that my table has headers, and this is the range which we can see with the running marquee around it, click OK. Three things happen. Number one, the filters get added in automatically. Number two, we have a table style applied automatically, and we can change the style. So let me come in and I'll find something a little bit more subtle. And the third thing that happens is that we have these table tools, a contextual menu. And in the table tools for designing our table, we can add in a total row. So now down here, and let me just 
move this down so I have a little bit more room. If we take a look at the function over here, the subtotal function, which I like, but now notice that the function number is 109. And I showed you that, that we have 11 functions and 9 is sum because it's alphabetical. Well, how do we get 109? Well, let me come over here to the diagram. We have, beginning in Excel 2003 and continuing through Excel 2007, 2010, whenever we are working to produce a subtotal inside a list or a table as opposed to a range, we get a function plus 100. So 109 means we're going to use the sum function, but Excel is telling us that we're using the subtotal function inside a structured table in this case. In Excel 2003, the terminology is a list. And notice that there is a drop down over here. So if I wanted to see the average, now the function that is being used is function number 101. So instead of 1, because I'm working with an Excel 2010 table, it's called 101. But also notice that the reason we're able to expand the data is that the function is written with the name of the field inside brackets. So we include the name of the field inside brackets. And what this means is that when I expand the number of records, so in this case I'll use tab to insert a blank row for the month of July. Let's add in graphic design software, let's say 25,000. And let's add in one more. Let's add in, well, I wanted to make that July. For the month of July, I want to add in uh, business software. And let's make that also 25,000. You see the numbers automatically update. So when I come in and I put in the sum, then you see that I have the, those records have been added in. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this formula and come up here to the top of the data set and I'm going to paste it twice. Control V to paste, Control V to paste. So now let's take a look over here. I'm using the function number 109 to sum the name table. So when I created the table, it, it, unless I go in and change the name, which I'm going to do in a couple of seconds, Excel just adds in the next number for a table. And then there is the sales field, and notice that it is in brackets. Now, when I want to change the function over here for average, I can just edit it right in here. So I'll change it to function number 101. Remember, function 101 gives us the average when we're working in a list. Now, instead of having table number seven in these formulas, what I'm going to do is make sure I select the single cell inside the data set so I have access to the contextual tab, table tools design. And in this case, I want to come over here and change the name to DR, Danny Rocks, my initials. So now if I come back and re-examine the formula, subtotal using 109 in this name table DR in this field. So the name of the field inside the brackets. Use function number 101 over here for the average. So I want to change this to be 101 for the average in this name field called DR in this field called sales. Now let's apply a filter. So in this case, let's filter just the records that I added in for the month of July and click OK. And there you go. So those were those records that I appended to my data set. The trick was that I went through and with a single cell selected, I inserted a table. This gave me access to the table tools for design. I changed the name of the table, so it made it much more uh, meaningful. When you name a table, begin with a letter and no spaces in the name. I added in the total row. I can toggle that on or off. With the total row, I can change the function. And I can also add a total row to any of the other fields over here. So for example, if I wanted to get a count, that's telling me how many records are in there produce a different uh, filter in here. Let's just say that now we want them in the month of July only for business software. My count is one record and there is my sum function. So the count function, which is 103, uh, in this case it's using uh, count A, which is the non-blank values. If it were a numeric field it would be 102 for count, 109 for sum. So there are 11 functions 
and the numbers are in alphabetical sequence. If we're working on a list in Excel 2003, working on a table in Excel 2007-2010, the function numbers plus 100. Now I'm going to remove all of the filters. So down here I'm going to say clear the filter and over here I'm going to say clear the filter and now you can see how you can maintain accurate subtotals when you first convert your uh, range, your data range, into an Excel table in Excel 2007, Excel 2010. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.